So what I'm doing here now is I'm changing uh, the lines to two different colors. So the outside line around my egg holder and the circle, I'm going to color in red. Now the reason being that is because that I want those to be cut out. So there's two sort of commands or two things I want to tell the laser cutter. I want to tell the laser cutter which lines I want cut out and which lines I just want simply engraved. Because I want these black lines engraved so I can fold my paper, my card, okay? So I've got red lines to cut and black lines to engrave. So now we're ready to send this information to the laser cutter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna to zoom to the full page. I'm gonna select all my egg holder and I'm gonna bring that right up to the top left-hand corner. And then I'm gonna zoom in on my drawing. And I'm gonna send some information through to the laser cutter. So the next stage now is to go to file and print. And it's the spirit laser cutter. And then we go to properties and then we go to pen tool. Now what I've got there now are two colors that I'm interested. In. I'm interested in the red and the black. Okay, so these are the two colors that I'm gonna to send to the laser cutter, all right? So there's two sort of um, commands that I want the laser cutter to do for me. So first of all, what we're gonna do is tell the laser cutter what to do with my red lines. So we want these to be cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow the speed down, okay? Because the slower the speed, the more intense the laser will be on the material. And the more intense the laser is, um, the more it will cut through your material, okay? So my speed's around about five for card, okay? Uh, and the power, I'm gonna put up to 100. So now I'm gonna tell the laser cutter what I want it to do with the black lines. Now I want the black lines to be engraved, okay? So I want the speed to be a lot faster, so the laser is less intense. And I want the power to be less as well. So I'm gonna do the power around about 50, okay? So now I've told the laser cutter what I want it to do. I just simply press okay. And send it to the printer. As you can see there now, my file has come through to the laser cutter and we're ready to set up the laser cutter now to cut. So in order to set the laser cutter up, we place the card, okay, in the laser cutter. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing the gauge into the middle of the card. So what the gauge will do is just uh, record um, the height, okay, or the thickness of the material. So what I'm going to do now is to raise the bed until the card touches the tip of the gauge. Okay, so the tip of the gauge now is touching the card. So the laser cutter now knows how thick this particular card is. So we remove the gauge and we recall the laser back to the starting position. And now we're ready to cut. So here's my card model, and what I'm gonna do with this later is uh, use it to help me mark out the curved lines and the chamfered edges on my acrylic later on. So use it as a template. Um, but as you can see, the laser cutter has cut round all my lines and my circle as I've asked it to. And also you can see that my model folds quite easily.
into position. So once I finish my egg holder, it should look like this. So the marking out tools that we're going to use for this particular process is a biro to mark our lines with, a steel engineer's rule to measure with, a tri-square to mark lines at 90 degrees, and also dividers. We're going to use these to locate the centre of our drilling hole. Okay, so we're going to start off with the marking out process of our egg holder, all right? Now, it's very important to keep the protective film on the acrylic. So to protect the acrylic from scratching, we're going to keep the clear film on. So I'm going to use my model, okay, which I made earlier, all right, to take some key dimensions off. So the first two dimensions I'm going to mark out are these two fold lines, this one and this one here, okay? So firstly, I'm going to take my steel rule, okay, and I'm going to measure the distance between here and this fold line here. So that is approximately 50 millimeters. So with my steel rule now, I'll mark that on top of the plastic. So from the edge of my acrylic, I mark 50 millimeters. And just put a mark there with a pen. Now what I could do is use my steel rule and I could mark a line across there because that's the line which I'm gonna fold. But what could happen is I could mark that line like that which is not particularly straight. So after marking my point now, I need to draw a line at 90 degrees across here. Now, in order to help me with that, I'm going to use a tri-square. Now, if you notice with this tri-square, okay, we've got an angle at 90 degrees and that's gonna help us out. So what you do is you place the tri-square uh, tri 
tight against your work like this so it slides up and down like that look okay tight against this wooden edge here and you slide it up to your marking out so this edge is tight against my acrylic and that will help you mark a line across there 90 degrees now look how straight that line is okay so if i compare that to the line i drew earlier and i draw a line across there at 90 degrees so this is the line that i've drawn at 90 degrees here you can see the difference in accuracy all right so when you're drawing lines uh, across your work okay and you want it at 90 degrees all right we use a tri square okay now i need to draw my next line across so i'm going to get my template what I'm going to do then is measure from this line to this line. And that there, the distance from there to there is 56 millimetres. Okay, now there's a reason why it's 56 millimetres and I'll explain later on in the process. So from this line here, we measure 56 millimetres and we place a mark. Then again, we get our tri-square and we place the tri-square tight against the edge of our acrylic, slide it up towards our mark and we draw a line across. And there we have our two folded lines. So the next stage now is to mark out this hole. All right, now we don't need to draw the hole on our work. All we need to do is locate the center of this hole. Okay, all right because uh, we're going to line up the drill with the centre of that hole to drill that hole a bit later. So we want to find out where the centre of that hole is on this area of our acrylic. Okay. Right. So what we've got there now is a square which is 50 millimetres by 50 millimetres. Now we need to find the centre of our square. So all we need to do is to divide 50 in half. So 50 in half is 25 that way and 50 in half this way is 25. So if this is our acrylic, there's our two folding lines that we just marked out. What we need to do is find the center of this square here. Okay. Now in order to find the center of that, what we need to do is to measure 25 millimeters from this corner. From this corner, we need to measure 25 millimeters. Okay, now what we, what we can do there then is to project these lines across and down, so horizontally and vertically, to find our center where we're gonna drill the hole later on. So there's an easy way to do that using our dividers. So dividers have two adjustable straight legs. And at the end, very sharp points, all right? Now, like I said, uh, acrylic is very brittle, so we're able to scratch it, all right? So we're going to mark the center of our hole by scratching the surface of the acrylic. Now, it doesn't matter if we do that because we're gonna drill the hole out later, so we won't be able to see it, okay? Right, now what calipers are used for, all right, is, the, is to measure uh, the, a distance between two parallel edges okay all right so what we've got here is two sharp points now what we need to do between those sharp points is measure a distance of 25 millimeters okay so what it's got here is a little screw okay and that allows you to screw it so it tightens up so the distance between the two sharp points gets smaller and then screw it outwards okay so the two distance between the two points gets wider all right, so in order to measure that distance, we use our steel rule. Uh, we place the point of the divider at zero on our steel rule. And then we sort of adjust the dividers until the two points are at 25 millimeters in distance apart. I'll just show you this way. So you can see that one point is at zero, and my other point is at 25 millimeters. All right, so that distance between there and there is correct, exactly what I want. 
So how do we use these dividers then? Well, what we do, like I said, we need to locate the circle, okay? The hole that we're gonna cut in this square here, okay? On the acrylic, all right? So to locate the center, we place the divider, okay? On the edge of our acrylic, so it can slide up and down, look, like that. Now, I'm not pressing uh, this point into the acrylic yet, but I just want to show you that if I drag that divider down, you can see that it's following the edge of my acrylic, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to press into my acrylic, okay? And then I'm gonna draw a line down. Like that. So I'm sliding this point here against the edge of my acrylic and then just very slightly making a mark in my acrylic, okay? So the distance between there and there is 25 millimeters, like that. All right, now we can check that with our steel rule. It's always good to check before uh, cutting it, make sure it's correct. That is correct. Okay, 25 millimeters. So what I need to do now is I need to find the center point, okay, of this particular square here. So I found uh, the center going vertically. Now I gotta find the center going horizontally. So what I need to do now is turn my acrylic this way and we're gonna slide one side of the dividers down this edge of our acrylic now, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is slightly press in to the acrylic with this part of the divider, and just generally, just slowly drag that divider down. And there you have, okay, your center hole, okay? That is where you're going to drill your hole later on. Okay, so what's the next stage? Well, there's a reason why I made a model, okay? It's to help me uh, draw this radius here, okay? And also to draw my, what we call our chamfered edges, okay? Now chamfered edges, uh, these chamfered edges are at 45 degrees, okay? All right, now to get those accurate, I'm gonna use my template. So I'm gonna put my template on top of my acrylic Okay, so it fits all the way around. And then what I'm going to do then is use my biro. I'm gonna simply just mark off those chamfered edges. I'm just gonna color those in. The good thing about this template is made on uh, the laser cutter. Okay, so it's very accurate. So that will help me get both chamfered edges the same size without having to go through some complex marking out exercises. So once you've marked the line, just shade in the area that you're going to remove later on, like that. So they're my chamfered edges. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to mark my rounded edges. So again, place my template on there. And then I'm going to mark off my radius this side. And color in what I'm going to remove shading I should say and then I'm going to do the same this side so the great thing about using a template is that if I was going to make say a batch of 10 of these okay I could repeat the same process accurately over and over again all right without having to mark it all out using a tri square a pen and all sorts of other marking out tools so it speeds up the process The next stage is we're going to drill a hole in our acrylic, okay? And we're gonna drill a hole around about uh, 34 millimeters in diameter, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to use the pillar drill to do that. But what I need to do is to assure that I drill uh, that hole in the exact position, okay? And not only that, is that I use the pillar drill safely. So we're going to use two jigs to help us. So first of all, we're going to use this jig here, all right? This jig is gonna help us Okay, drill a four millimeter pilot hole, all right, through our acrylic. So the reason why we're going to drill a pilot hole is because if we try and drill a large hole through that first of all, okay, we could snap the acrylic. Now all you do is you slide your acrylic into the jig and the jig stops at a certain point and it stops exactly where the center that we marked 
on our acrylic, okay? So jigs are important because not only do they help us use um, machinery safely, but they also allow us to drill repetitive holes and do repetitive things over and over again very, very quickly, okay? So once we drill the pilot hole in there, we're then ready to drill the large hole. So we're going to use this jig here, all right? Now you'll see it a little bit more clearly now when I place this acrylic in the jig. As you can see there, all right, in the center of that, all right, you can see that where my markings out are. So this is the diameter hole that we're gonna drill, which is about 34 millimeters, all right? But this jig will help me not only support my material in the um, in the pillar drill, but also lead me to to drill that hole very accurately. So here you can see that I've set up the jig on the pillar drill. So I have placed a four millimeter drill bit in the chuck. Okay, I've placed the jig on the bed of the pillar drill, and I've secured the jig down on the on to the pillar drill using a G clamp, okay? So that gives me two hands free, okay? To operate the pillar drill using the handle. And also if I need uh, to press the emergency stop in an emergency. So before using a pillar drill, we need to take some safety precautions, okay? First of all, we need to make sure that we've got protective eyewear, okay, to protect any debris flying into our eyes, all right? We need to take all jewelry off, okay? Uh, we need to make sure our sleeves are rolled back so they don't get caught up in the, the drill, all right? And also, what we need to do is make sure the guard is always placed over the chuck. Okay, so I'm going to now slide my acrylic into my jig. All right, um, I'm now going to drill a pilot hole through my acrylic. And uh, it's very important that we drill through the, the acrylic very slowly, because like we ex like I explained earlier, that acrylic is very brittle. So if we were to pull that pillar drill down really fast and really aggressively, that's going to bend the acrylic and eventually snap it. Okay, so very slowly using the pillar drill. I know that I've gone through the uh, acrylic because uh, I've got wood coming up out of the hole. So that means I've gone into the wood underneath. So I've um, successfully drilled through the acrylic. And as you can see, look how accurate that is now. Using that jig has helped me accurately and safely drill that hole in the exact position I want it in. Okay, now I need to replace this uh, four millimeter drill bit, okay, with a 34 millimeter diameter forstner bit, all right? So a force bit is generally used to drill wider holes, all right? So like I said, this hole will drill a 34 millimeter diameter hole through our acrylic. To take the twist drill out of the pillar drill, we use a chuck key, all right? And there's in the chuck, okay, which is on the pillar drill, you'll see a hole. We place the chuck key in the hole to untighten it. We take the chuck out of the pillar drill, remove the drill bit. And then what we can do there now is to widen the chuck, okay, by turning it. Until it's wide enough to place my force a bit inside, and then I can tighten it back up. Now what we gotta remember, okay, is that we tighten uh, this force a bit in the chuck with the chuck key. Okay, so you turn that to the hole and then you tighten it up. Now always remember to remove the chuck key from the pillar drill. And um, so yeah, I've drilled my pilot hole now. Now we're gonna drill the larger hole. All right, okay. So I place my acrylic in the jig, slide it up, okay. And then, like I said, drill very, very slowly um, through the acrylic 
because like I said, acrylic is brittle and if we go through too fast, it's going to snap and break. Just let the, the force bit gradually bite into the acrylic and then drill very, very slowly. Let the drill go through the acrylic very gradually. What you'll see there now is swarf coming off. That means now that I've uh, gone into the acrylic. And you'll know you've gone through the acrylic because the sound of uh, generally change. There you can see all the wood chippings coming up now. So that means I've gone through. Turn the machine off. Then release the clamp. And before removing it from the jig, just give it a tap upside down. And then you can slide it out. Right there then is a perfect hole in the center. Now we've successfully marked out our acrylic and also drilled the hole using a pillar drill, we're ready now to shape our acrylic. Now on our model, we have uh, two types of finished edge. We have a chamfered edge, which is chamfered at 45 degrees. We also got a rounded edge, okay? So we need to shape those. And also what we need to do is to finish the edges of our acrylic, because this has been cut on a circular saw. So it's left some nasty saw marks all the way down the edges of our acrylic. So we need to remove them also, okay? Now a file has a very rough surface, okay? So it's able to cause friction. Um, so that will wear away the acrylic. So we will be able to shape it with it. Um, files come in all different sort of shapes. This is a flat file. We've got a half rounded file. So it's half rounded on the top there, flat on the bottom and We've also got a circular file, okay? But the one we're going to use today is a flat file. First of all, what we're going to do is shape the edges, okay? All right, we need to remove those saw marks uh, that was caused by the rip saw when this material was cut to size. Um, so first of all, what we need to do is to place our acrylic plastic in this, which is called a vise. Now we're not gonna place the acrylic too high in the vise because uh, we're, while we're working on this, we don't want um, the acrylic to bend and snap, okay? So we wanna place it quite low in the vise, as low as we can in the vise really, okay? About two, um, about two thirds of the way down, all right? So we can see the top there. Right. So now our work securely in the vise. Now we have two hands to work with, all right, while our work is in the vise. So uh, yeah, let's start filing it. So if we drag our fingernail across the side of our acrylic like that, it feels really bumpy. So we wanna get rid of that, okay? All right, that was caused by the saw marks when this acrylic was cut to size. So what we're gonna do in order to remove those saw marks, we're going to use a flat file. The first filing method we're going to use is called draw filing. Now draw filing, uh, is carried out like this. So the first filing method we're going to use is called draw filing. So when we draw file, we stand uh, behind our work, all right? And we hold the file so it's horizontally across our work like this, all right? Now, when you hold the file, I normally place my two thumbs in the middle of the file on uh, over the acrylic, because that's where I'm going to apply the pressure, all right? I've also got more control over the file by doing that. If I place my hands too wide on the file, I've got less control, okay? And I could catch my knuckles on the table, all right? So the way you hold it is just to bring your thumbs very close like this, all right, over your acrylic, hold the file over the acrylic, and then you're just gonna push back and forth like you would open and closing a drawer, like this, back and forth, okay? Now you need to go all the way to the back, and all the way to the front, because if you focus too much on the middle, 
you're going to have a dip in your wound, okay? So, we're going to go back and forth like this. So, two thumbs in the middle of your uh, file, okay, your flat file. Place your thumbs and the file over the acrylic and push all the way forward and all the way back. And just keep going back like that. Now, instead of sore marks now, you will see scratches. Because like I said, acrylic, okay, it's brittle, it's hard. So you'll be able to scratch the material. But we can remove those scratches later on. So don't worry about that. So as you can see, there's some plastic sort of dust settling around my work. Whatever you do, don't blow that because you don't want it to go back into your eyes. Uh, just get a vacuum uh, cleaner later and um, wash your hands. So once you finish that side, you can change over and repeat the same process the other side. So remember as well, don't uh, tighten the vice up too tight, okay? Because like I said, uh, acrylic is very brittle and you don't want to snap it, okay? So again, thumbs in the middle, over the top of your acrylic and back and forth. And just to check on your work, just run your nail across the top. And if you feel those, uh, there's still some sore marks in, then continue. Now remember this process is called draw filing. And we're using a flat file and a file is used to shape your material. Okay, now we've done the two longer sides, okay, and removed those sore marks. What we need to do now are the two shorter sides. So we can't place our acrylic in the vise like so, because it won't go all the way down in the middle, all right? And if we placed it this high as well, remember acrylic is brittle and it could snap. So we place it to the side of the vise and slide it in as far as it can go, and then close the vise like so, not too tight, just enough to secure your work. And then you carry on with the process, which is draw filing. The next stage now is um, finishing the corners of our acrylic. Now remember, um, we've got two, type, two different finishes on our corners. We've got a chamfered finish, and on the bottom we've got a rounded finish, all right? Um, so what we're going to do first of all, we're going to round our corners first at the bottom, okay? So uh, we're gonna use another filing method, all right? We're gonna use the same file. Instead of using draw filing now, we're gonna use a method called cross filing. Okay, now cross filing is generally used to uh, remove large pieces of uh, material at a certain time. Okay, all right. So um, what we're going to do now, we're going to place this in a vise and um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to uh, cross file. So first of all, what we need to do is to place this acrylic in the vise. So this little point here is facing the ceiling. Okay, and also that is quite low in the vise because we're going to be cross filing now and we'll be pushing the acrylic this way, all right? Okay, so um, if it's too high in the vise, it will snap, all right? So we've got to put it quite low in the vise. So make sure that point is facing the ceiling and place it down as low. So it's about a centimeter, 10 millimeters poking up. Now, first of all, when we round this corner, what we need to do is get rid of the sharp point, first of all. So what we're gonna do is just flatten this corner, all right? And we're gonna use a method called cross filing to do that. Okay, so once when uh, cross filing, we now place our file on top of the work, on top of the, the pointed edge, like so, all right? We place our hand flat on the front, okay? You can pinch it if you'd like to. And then we place our hand on this handle, and what I do normally is I just put my index finger on top just to give that um, file a little bit of support. Okay, so by cross filing that now, what you've got there now is a flat edge like that. Okay, all right. Now, what we need to do now is round that edge. So we place it in the vise again, okay, like you did before. Slightly a bit higher in the vise this time. And then tighten it. So we're gonna use a cross filing method, but we're gonna curl 
the file around that edge, okay, to round it. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna push the file, but we're gonna round it like this. So we're gonna push it forward and turn the file like so. All right, so let's give that a go. So you start in this position with the file here on this side, and then when you finish, the finishing position of the file should be there, okay? So you push, turn, finish. Push, turn, finish, like this. So push, turn, there. Push, turn, there. So what I'm doing is I'm turning my wrist as I'm pushing the file, like that. So push, turn, finish. Now what I've got there is a nice, um, hopefully you can see it, a nice rounded edge there, okay? So I need to do the same uh, same on the other side. First of all, have it in the vise, so the point is facing the ceiling. Take that edge off. So it's nice and flat. Raise it slightly in the vise, around about 15 mil from the table. And then like I said, then we're gonna round it by pushing and turning our wrist. So push and turn. Start there, push, push, turn, turn, there. Push, turn. Lovely. Okay, so I got nice, I got two curved edges there now, all right? Now the next phase now is to chamfer these edges. Okay, so what I'm gonna use now to chamfer the edges, so to shape these two edges at 45 degrees, okay, I'm gonna use an engineer vise. Before we were using a woodworking vise, but uh, the engineer vise is gonna help us out. So what I'm gonna do with the engineer vise is I'm gonna place the acrylic in the vise, so this line here is level with the top of the engineer vise, like this. Okay, so you can see there's my line, and I'm gonna just bring it down there to it's level and flush with the top of my engineer vise, like that. So the engineer vise, okay, is gonna help us because when I'm cross-filing this, when I reach the surface of the engineer vise, I know that I've hit that line, okay? All right, so I can get that perfect. So to cross-file this edge, remember to stand in front of your work, okay, all right? Um, and then place the file on top of the point, like so. And then all I'm gonna do then is to push the file forward and remove and push forward again until I reach the surface of the engineer voice. Okay, so I've reached the surface of my engineer voice now, so I can remove my acrylic. So as you can see there now, uh, by using that cross-filing method, all right, that I've um, successfully chamfered that edge at 45 degrees. So what I'm gonna do now is the other side. As you can see now, that edge is flush with the, the engineer voice. So that means I've reached my point. So what I've got here now are two finished corners, which are both rounded. And also at this end, two finished corners, which are chamfered, all right? And also, I've removed the saw marks from my acrylic. So there was two filing methods I used there. All right, can you remember them? Well, one was draw filing, okay? And one was cross filing. So cross filing is like that, okay? And draw filing is when you go back and forth like a draw. All right, so now I've successfully finished those edges now. What I need to do now is to um, get rid of the fine scratches that I've made with the file, okay? So that's the next phase. Like I said, the next stage is the finishing process. We're gonna remove those fine scratches from the edges of our acrylic. Now the first process of the finishing process is using wet and dry paper, okay? So this is a very fine paper used to remove fine scratches from acrylic or metal. So I'm gonna place my acrylic in the vise, in the woodworking vise, and wet and dry. So what we do, we place the wet and dry paper in the water, like so. And then we can rub 
back against the edge of our acrylic and you'll instantly see or instantly feel a very smooth finish coming off. If you've uh, successfully got rid of those saw marks, okay, you're going to have a very nice finish on the edge of your acrylic after this process. Because all you're doing at the moment is removing those, like a fine layer of acrylic to remove those scratches. So you can see the acrylic is um, sticking to the wet and dry paper at the moment. So finishing is very important because, you know, uh, it's going to add aesthetics and appeal to your project. Okay, all right, it's going to give it that wow factor. So you want to make sure you always give, you know, after all that hard work that you've gone through, through the marking out, the cutting, the shaping, it's always beneficial then to spend some time on the finishing process. So that uh, you've got rid of those fine scratches. Okay, you can move on to the next side. We've removed those fine scratches, okay, from our acrylic. We're ready now to buff it up to a polished finish. So what we're going to use is the buffing wheel, okay. Now on this particular wheel, there's some um, um, chemical compound which polishes the edges of our material, so give it a nice shiny aesthetic finish. Said, um, going back to health and safety when you're using this, okay, remember, make sure you wear safety glasses, your sleeves are tied back, your long hair is tied back as well, and any loose jewelry is removed, okay. Um, same, uh, same on and off process, okay, so you've got the green button for on, okay, and the red button for off, and uh, always make sure the guard is over the wheel. So in order to use the buffing wheel, what you need to do is to hold it, the air cold at the top and at the bottom, and then the wheel will be rotating forwards like that, okay? So you need to uh, push the air holder in the opposite direction, because if you put it, push it in the same direction, the air holder or your plastic is gonna fly into the buffer and could be pretty dangerous, okay? So we always hold the acrylic at the top there at the bottom, and then we just very gently rub it against the wheel, okay? Don't press too hard because again, uh, that's gonna cause a lot of friction, a lot of heat, and it's gonna wear out the plastic. So you'll see it's like a dip in your plastic. So you're just gently touching on to the buffing wheel and um, just pulling it back very, very gently. <laughs> Smaller size, just hold the acrylic here and at the top securely. Okay, so hand underneath, all right, because when you place the um, acrylic on the wheel, the wheel want to push it down. So always make sure your hand is not on top but on the bottom of the material and then you push it up towards the ceiling like that. Polishing your corners as well. Very gently pressing it against the button machine. The key thing is to always have your hand underneath the acrylic and the other hand on top. Like I said, always take your time on the finish. Finish is important. Okay, doing all that hard work and then coming out with a poor finish is not good. On a good quality finish on our work. So take some pride here. 
Uh, you won't be able to see that on there, but that is absolutely smooth and polished to a very good finish. Okay, so I'm very happy with that. Um, if you haven't um, wet and dried all those scratches off, what you'll find is you'll see some of the compound that was on the wheel will go inside those scratches, okay? So you might have to go back and wet and dry those and come back on the buffer, all right? But yeah, that's the finishing stage complete. Now we're ready to bend our acrylic into shape. Okay, so here we are at the strip heater. All right, now before we place our acrylic in the strip heater, we need to remove the protective film because if that burns on the, um, the strip heater, it's gonna give off a nasty smell and it's not very nice. Okay, so what I've got now is no lines to indicate where I'm gonna fold my acrylic. But that doesn't matter because what we can use is this gauge on the strip heater, which gives us uh, the, the distance between uh, um, our acrylic and the hot strip wire, okay, is that we need to bend that line at 51 and a half millimeters. So I'm gonna set my tri-square here, okay, and I'm just gonna slide the tri-square down until it reaches around about, it's not gonna be approximate, but around about 51 and a half millimeters, okay? And I'm just gonna leave my steel rule, okay, in that position. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to place my uh, acrylic into the strip heater, so I place it on the back and I rest it on top of my steel rule. Okay, and against the gauge. So I know that's gonna fold at 90 degrees. Okay, so I need to keep it in there until the acrylic goes soft and that will enable me to bend it. So while my acrylic is in the strip heater heating up, I'm just gonna show you this. This is my folding jig, okay, which I'm gonna use to bend my acrylic at 90 degrees. Okay, so once it's warm enough, the acrylic, it should become soft. Then I can place it inside the jig. I can bend that, okay, at 90 degrees like this, okay? All right, so I'll be able to fold that into the jig and bend that at 90 degrees very accurately. So that's what I'm gonna do once the acrylic is soft. So as you can see there now, I placed it inside the jig and I bent the acrylic. Okay, I folded the acrylic over it. So it's, it's very helpful having jigs to do this. So I'm gonna take that out of there now. And you can see that is the acrylic then is bent and folded at 90 degrees. There. So this should stand up now. There we go. So I'm gonna leave the steel rule there at 51 and a half millimeters. I'm gonna slide my acrylic now around the back. They sit, so it's sitting on the steel rule and against the gauge, so I know the fold's gonna be at 90 degrees. So. Okay, so what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna put a tri square on top of that. Okay, so I know that I fully bent that at 90 degrees. So by using the jig, it's allowed me to fold those lines at 90 degrees perfectly. During any manufacturing process, you'll always have someone uh, on the production line checking for quality control. During the manufacturing process, at the start and at the end, uh, products are tested to see whether they meet certain standards. Any product that does not meet those standards will either be sent back to um, the production line to be reworked or it will be discarded. Only checking products at the end of production uh, for quality can be a costly process because that particular product could have gone through a lot of manufacturing processes and taken a lot of valuable time and by realizing mistakes at the end of uh, the process could be very costly. One of the benefits of quality control is it reduces the chance of uh, poor quality products reaching the end user. 
Finding faults at the end of production can be very costly. Just think of all the wastage material you're going to have. And also by uh, sending um, products to be reworked um, and, and fixed can be very time consuming and costly. So the person responsible for quality control checks might have some measuring uh, equipment with him. He might have uh, something like a micrometer. Okay. Uh, he might even have a steel rule or even uh, electronic calipers, okay? Uh, so they can check whether a product was in the right dimensions and the right tolerances. So measuring equipment like micrometers, electronic calipers, or even a steel rule might need someone um, very experienced and skilled to use. Now to eliminate that, all right, uh, companies can use something like a go no-go gauge like I've got here. So this go no go gauge, okay, is a very quick method for checking for quality to see whether uh, products are within tolerance. So what I have here are two egg holders that look very similar, okay, and have gone through the same manufacturing processes. Now what I'm going to do is check for quality to see if they meet certain standards and uh, meet certain tolerances. Now to do that, I'm going to use my go no go gauge. So what I've done on the laser cutter very accurately is cut out the side of the egg holder just to check whether I folded it within tolerance. Now my tolerances are zero to plus two millimeters. So the dimensions are not to be uh, below the original dimensions, but can be plus two millimeters bigger than the original dimensions. So for example, um, if the measurement is 50 millimeters, uh, the Tolerance is not to go below 50 millimeters, because zero tolerance, and um, it would be able to go up to 52 millimeters because it's plus two in tolerance. Hopefully that makes sense. So to use this now, I'm gonna test it with one of my egg holders. So I'm gonna put it in sideways to see whether it meets certain standards, those tolerances. So let's put it in. As you can see, although it's gone through the same manufacturing processes as the other egg holder, all right, you can see it doesn't fit in my go no go gauge. All right, it's well out of tolerance. Okay, all right, so this one would be discarded. Now, if I was to test maybe 10 of these and they all come out like that, I'd have to cease production and to make sure that all machines were recalibrated to make sure that um, uh, production and products improved in, in terms of quality. So this one now, I'm gonna check again to see whether it's a go or a no-go. So as you can see there, it fits perfectly, okay, inside the go no-go gauge, okay? So this one has passed certain standards, so it's ready go to go on to the next, next stage production.